Hey guys, what is up? Now, you guys know that the number one thing that I am concerned about and take care of is what? My tires, right? It's the thing that I monitor and take care of the most. Because everything about our life now it rides on our tires. Well, with all the supply chain issues that are going on right now, and the date of my current tires, I decided, you know what? I'm gonna get all new six tires for the RV right now while I can. Details coming up on RV Street. Okay, let's get right to it. So the first thing I wanna do is kinda of set the table and give you some information on why I chose now to get these tires replaced, the kind of tires I bought, some of the items that I wanted to implement during this install, and the price that I paid for the tires. So a little history. We bought this 2012 Winnebago back in 2016. And they had just replaced the front tires with two Michelins, okay? The back dualies were the same tires from the factory, but now they were about four years old or so. But I had new tires on the front. So I went ahead and left the rear tires alone because as a lot of you guys know, I spent 18 months getting this RV ready to go full time. So I thought, well, when we get ready to go full time, I'll deal with the rear tires then. So moving forward now, 18 months, we're getting ready to go full time. Now my rear dualies are five, five and a half years old. So I wanted to replace them with Toyo M122s. Now I have had lots of uh, uh, previous experience with Toyos. I've had them on other vehicles and I really like those tires. Uh, they're a great performing tire. They brake good, they ride well in the rain and they're a whole lot cheaper than Michelin's. So I went ahead and replaced all four of those, okay? So off we go full timing. Well, now here we are in two, approaching 2022. The Michelins that were on the front are now five and a half years old. The Toyos on the back that I put on when we started are now four, four and a half years old. My Michelins are beginning to get, they're approaching to dating out. Now I got some time left on the Toyos, but I had a couple of problems I wanted to solve. First of all, I have missed match tires. I got Mitch's on the front, I got Toyos on the back, and if you ever have a roadside tire emergency, that can cause some issues too. I wanted to have the same tires all the way around with all the same dot dates, and that just makes my life a whole lot easier and safer uh, going forward. So that's the reason I decided to replace all six tires at one time. So this year, as a lot of you know, we went up to the uh, northeast corner up into Maine for the whole entire summer. But this changing the tire uh, problem was on my mind and I knew I wanted to address that when we got back down here in Texas for the winter. So I got on the phone and I called Southern Tire in Willis, Texas. And we've been using this Southern Tire company for several years. So I know these guys and, and they're really not far from the campground where we stay when we're here. So I called them when we were, I don't know, in Ohio or something like that on our way back down. I told them I wanted the Toyo M122s. I wanted new stems. I wanted two new extensions. And I had another list of things that I wanted to do on install day, but I'll cover that with them later. They said fine. So I wanted to make sure they had plenty of time to get those tires. Now, while I was waiting for those tires and continuing my trek back down, into Texas. So I started typing out this list of different items that I wanted to address and go over with them on install day. This is the list right here. I want to go over each item of this list. So let's go do that. The first thing I wanted to cover with them is I wanted to make sure that they put two jacks under the front axle instead of one. I've been to several tire places where they'll take one jack and they'll put it right up into the center of the axle. Now, I know that's a common practice, but for my RV, I didn't want to put all that weight on the center of that axle. I wanted them to put two, one on either side of the axle and raise it evenly up that way. So that was the first item I put on there that I wanted to cover with them. 
The second thing I wanted to cover with them is taking off this uh, outside lug nut cover. I actually have uh, had a, a friend who took his uh, RV to a tire shop. And you know, you think you're going to tire, these guys know what they're doing, right? Well, they took that gun, that air gun, and began to immediately start zipping off these lug nuts on the outside of this chrome cover. They're actually lug nut caps. And he spun those things right off and broke the lug nuts, these covers, off the chrome cover. What you have on the rim here is you have a chrome cover. And this chrome cover is held on by two dummy uh, caps. You got one here, and the other one will be automatically down opposite of the other one. And the way you can tell which are the dummy uh, cap covers is right here on the cap cover itself. You see that little line, that little indentation right there? That's how you know that this is a dummy, a lug nut cap cover, whatever the hell you call them. But these have got to come off. And when you take this one off and this one off, this whole uh, chrome cover comes off and now you have all the eight lug nuts in behind here to remove the wheel. Now to get these chrome cap covers off, you use a wrench like this. It's a, it's a, a T-handle chrome cover remover here. It's an inch and five eighths. And you just put it in there like that and you break them loose. You see that? You take this one off, you take that one off and this cover will come off. And you just tighten them by hand. You do not put a air, air impact gun on these. Now, some people, when they buy their coach, if they buy a new coach, like our friends right next door, it came with one of these. Came in their tool bag and all their manuals and all that. We don't have one of these, but the tire shop will. But it's always a good uh, preventative thing. When you go to a tire shop, just make sure uh, that the guys understand you've got these dummy uh, caps on here and don't be zipping them off with an air gun because it can uh, damage or ruin the cover, okay? Now the next thing I wanted to cover with him on my list is that once the cover is removed and the lug nuts are exposed, I have on my coach three tapered lug nuts per wheel. I have eight lug nuts in total, but three of them are tapered and you put those on first and tighten up the rim so it perfectly centers the rim to the hub. But you can kind of see the difference there. These help center the hub before you put in the other five of these. Once those three are put on, then you put on the other five lug nuts. Well, when you just happen to look at the outside of the lug nuts, it's hard to uh, distinguish which ones are tapered and which ones aren't. And you know how these tire guys are. They get their guns in there and they, vroom, 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 and they put all the lug nuts in a bucket and that's it. They think they're all the same. So going forward, I wanted to make sure that those three lug nuts that are tapered, that are on every single wheel, are identifiable. So I told him, when you get all the tires off and everything, give me uh, all 12 of those lug nuts and I'm going to paint them with uh, nail polish and then I'll give them back to you. That way, when they're on the wheel from this point going forward, all the tire guys are gonna know, oh, these are different. These are the ones that are tapered. The next thing on the list that I covered with them is when you put all the uh, new stems and extensions on, please give me the old extensions because I wanna show my uh, fans what this is all about. Because some people have concerns about using metal extensions. So let me go over this with you. These are the metal extensions right here. I marked the old ones with some marker here. This is just a cap, and this goes into the tire. So the rear inside dually has a metal stem. The extension goes on the stem, and then this comes through the outside dually, and this is where I put my TPMS sensor on the outside of the stem. I'll show you that more in a minute. But one thing I wanted to cover here is whenever you get new tires, you want to use, you want all new stems too, and you want metal stems. You don't want rubber stems. It's got a little collar on it right here, and it has this rubber gasket. But this goes from the inside of the rim and sticks out, and then they use this 
tapered nut and it's got this rubber gasket in here and that's what cinches it down to the rim. And this is the kind of metal stems that you want to use on a motorhome tire like this. And quite frankly, if I had any kind of RV, I would have metal stems on, on every one of my tires, period. That's just, that's just the way I would do it. If you use rubber ones over time, they can dry out, they can start to crack, and then you have a leaking tire problem. So you just eliminate that problem. You pay the few more bucks and you get metal ones. Now, let's get back to the stems. Let's go to the back of the dualies here because that's where they use. I want to show you something. So here we are on the passenger side rear dualies, and these are the new tires now installed. And down here, you can see that here's my uh, stem from the outside tire, and there is the stem coming through for the inside tire. You see that right there? Now let me show you on the inside of these tires. You can see the stem extension coming through right here and out to the outside dually right here. <clears throat> and one thing that some people tend to be afraid of, they say, oh, I wouldn't use extensions because something can fly up between here in the road, between the tires on the road, and it hits those extensions and it can cause a problem. This is another reason why I bought these Centromatic rings. I don't reuse powders, I don't use beads, and I don't do spin balancing. I road force balance which I'll cover in a minute. Well, you can see the Centromatic ring actually is right here in the middle of these two tires, and it gives even added protection for this extension. Then in addition to the Centromatic ring, I have this extension coming out and held tight with this rubber grommet. This stem and this sensor are as tight as all get out. So the bottom line is I have absolutely no problem running a metal extensions. Um, I actually looked for a long solid metal stem that would go from inside the rim and go all the way out to the outside dually, but the longest ones I could find were I think five, four or five inches long. They weren't long enough. I had to use a five and a half inch extension plus the stem to be able to be long enough to go through both rims. Uh, which is fine though. I mean, like I said, I've been doing, I've been running it this way for years and have had absolutely no issues. Now, when you put on these stems, okay, once again, you have this already on the rim and now you're going to install the stem. What you want to do is you tighten this hand tight because there's an O-ring in here. And then you put a wrench or a socket or something right here and just snug it down, okay? You don't crank down on it and, and risk pinching and ruining that uh, o-ring so hand tight then just a little bit more to set it okay the next thing on my list i wanted to show him was is this let me show you again again down here at the tires i wanted to make airing up my tires anytime i'm messing with my tires and want to air them up or whatever i thought you know it'd be really nice if they both were right here side by side and so i brought that up to him i said you know when you put these uh, rims back on rotate them around so they're right next to each other. And he said, fine, not a, not a problem. Now, some of you may think uh, that was a little bit too anal, but you know what? That's the way I roll. <laughs> Any little thing I can do to make my job easier, I do it. The next thing on my list is I wanted the tires road force balance. It's a different kind of balancing than uh, spin balance. Uh, right off the bat, I don't. I never use powders. I don't use beads for many reasons. One of the main ones is is they can interfere with your sensors, your TPMS sensors, of trying to balance your your uh, tires. So what? How do I balance mine? Well, I use the Centromatic rings to start with, but I also pay the extra money to have them road force balanced. Now with Centromatics, you don't even have to balance your tires. Okay, you don't even have to do that at all. You can just buy new tires, put the Centromatic rings, and off you go. But Centromatic rings really don't kick in and start uh, compensating for unbalanced tires until you get about 30, 35 miles an hour. And once again, I always, I mean, it's just the way I roll. You know, I want to start with my tires as perfect as possible. Put the Centromatic rings on. I will never have to worry about rebalancing these tires again uh, for the life of the tires. I just won't have to do that. So I pay that extra money to have them road force balance. Not all shops will have the ability to road force balance tires. Uh, this uh, Southern Tire here in Willis, they do. 
and that's kind of why I go back to them. They have the right equipment, but just bear that in mind, not all shops are able to do that kind of balancing. The last thing I told them to do is when the job is complete, I want these aired up to 90 pounds of PSI. Uh, I know the weight of my coach. I know these tires because I had them before, remember on the back. So I know what kind of air pressure I need. So I'm running 90 pounds all the way around according to my weight. And the last thing on my list, I told them that I do not put the chrome covers on the front tires. Remember the ones I showed you with the dummy uh, caps there? I said, don't put those back on because I'm gonna take this uh, RV and I'm gonna run it up the highway and, and put 50 miles on it and bring it back. And then I want you to one more time hand torque them to 450 pounds. He said, fine. I ran it up the highway, came back, they retorqued, put the caps on, we're good to go. So that's what I rode out to do in addition to replacing all the tires on install day. I wanted to be the first in line, so I was there at 7.30 in the morning. Uh, the tire guys, they show up and start working at 8. And I knew that this was going to be about a three or four hour job, and especially with my extra list of things that I wanted to take care of. So I was there bright and early. So let's go now and pick it up. We are now pulled into the shop and let's take it from there. I got with Keith, my installer guy, and I went over that list with him. You know, we've been coming to Southern Tire here uh, for quite a while, several years. And when you go to a tire shop, if you talk nice to them and, you know, I came in here with all my notes and all that on the things that I wanted to have done. But when you come to a tire shop and if you have any particular concerns or things that you want them to look at or whatever, if you uh, talk to them nicely, uh, you know, I have found that they will accommodate real well with you. I went ahead and pulled all my TPMS sensors off all the stems. So if you have TPMS sensors, don't forget to take these off. Here are my six new tires. All dot dates are the last week of uh, May 21, so they're about 16 weeks old or so. I was happy about that. These tires are Toyo M122s. They are a regional to urban all position tire. They're an H rated tire. They have a speed rating of 75 miles an hour. They have five plies of steel on the tread and one ply of steel on the sidewall. So remember on my list, the first thing was about the jacks under the front axle. Here's how they supported the front axle. Once all the old tires were removed, he gave me all 12 tapered lug nuts. I cleaned them, then put white nail polish on them and dried them so in the future, they're easily recognizable from the standard lug nuts. So I thought I'd show you guys uh, what a tire looks like inside uh, after five and a half years. This tire looks really, really good. And you know how it is, you know, you, you hit some of these slam jams on the freeway and pounding and expansion joints and all that. And sometimes you just think to yourself, oh my God, my tires are taking a beating. He had to put water around the tire uh, to break it away from the rim. So that's what you're seeing there. The inside of this Michelin is absolutely perfect. There's no cracking or uh, the appearance of a possibly a belt coming loose or anything like that. Now here's one of my rear tires. This, these are the Toyo M122s. It looks just fabulous. It really does. But I love these Toyo tires and just look at that. I mean, they're just in excellent shape inside. Once all the new tires were put back on the rims and he road force balanced them, he started installing them on the rear first. Okay, my tire guy has uh, balanced all the tires. There's, you can see one weight here on the outside and there's another one on the inside, right down in there. So to assemble back, he's gonna put the first inside dually on first. Then he's gonna take the centromatic ring and put that on because the centromatic ring goes in between both dualies. Okay, so now we're getting ready to put the outside dually on and uh, you can see how he put the inside stem there and then put the outside stem here so that way they'll both be in these two holes and that'll make airing up these tires a whole lot easier. On the front, we have the centromatic ring that goes on first and then he's going ahead and he's balanced it 
and now we're going to put on the tire. Now let's take a look at the rubber grommets I bought for the extensions on the rear dualies. These are uh, two grommets that I ended up buying. I had a heck of a time finding these things. Now that I'm getting new tires, I went on the hunt to try to find these. I did. So I got two of them, one for each outside dually. And we're going to put these on with the extension sticking out. And then I'll be able to put the sensor on the end of the, of the extension. Now when I bought those, I actually bought them almost a year ago. And I, like I said, it, they were tough to find. Man, I probably spent two or three hours trying to find those things. I finally did. And I've been carrying them with me all year, anticipating this tire uh, change. But I have since found these grommets. Uh, they, I actually have them now in my Amazon store. So if you have rims like I do, these things are, they fit perfect. Now remember what I told you about those tapered lug nuts? You install them first. By doing that, it centers the rim and the tire on the hub. Then you put on the other lug nuts. And like I said, once the job was complete, I drove out of the bay, I drove 25 miles up, 25 miles back. I swung back into the bay. They re a uh, hand torque to 450 pounds and put the chrome covers back on the front tires. So let's go over the invoice and I'll show you exactly what this cost and what I paid. So on the very first line here, you can see my tires alone were almost $1,800, okay, $1,789. And he did tell me that he uh, gave me a slight veteran's discount because I am a veteran. I didn't ask him how much, I really didn't care, but he did say he gave me a discount. The second line item is um, the, the tire change medium truck. They charged me 210 bucks. So that's the labor of changing out the tires. This is a pretty standard fee for uh, a, a tire shop, at least it has been for me. Um, so that's what that line item is. Uh, balancing the tires, 180. I, I, I didn't really have to spend that 180 bucks, okay? You, 180 divided by six, what does that come to? 30 bucks a tire, something like that? I mean, that's money I could have saved because I'm running Centromatics, but for Martin and in his world, I just pay it because I love road force balancing. It zeroes out these tires from the get-go and I'm just gonna pay that fee. Next line item is the valve stems and the, the shorter stems. Okay, so this is stems and stem extensions. That was 48 bucks. So that would be six of these and two of these, okay? Next line item is the valve cap flow through. I'll, I honestly, I didn't even see that when I paid for this. I have no idea what it is. It's 12 bucks, I don't care. And then there's your typical uh, tire disposal, blah, 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 uh, 48 bucks. Add it all up in tax, it was 24, 43, 59 out the door. In Martin's world, that is a great price for six brand new installed and all the work we did uh, for these Toyo tires, I'm going to tell you what, man, uh, in my world, that's a great deal. After running a YouTube channel for a while, I can pretty well start to anticipate uh, some questions that some of you will have. So I just want to address uh, what I know some of you are probably thinking. These Toyos uh, ride beautifully, they steer beautifully, they don't wander on the road, and they brake good in the rain. So just in the performance aspect, I'm really pleased with these tires. Obviously, or I wouldn't have just bought six of them. Here's another big thing to think about when you're buying tires. If you have a roadside emergency, you have a blowout, you get a flat, whatever, and now it has to be replaced, are the tires that you have, are they easily available to get a replacement? And sometimes you may have to buy a pair of them to replace, it just depends. That's another reason why I went ahead and stayed with the Toyos, because this tire, is readily available if in the event of a roadside emergency. Now granted, uh, with these uh, supply chain issues that we're dealing with today, I mean all tires, all things today are iffy at best on whether you can get it or not. But that is something to think about when you're replacing tires. And just remember, when you take your car or truck or RV, I don't care what vehicle it is, and you take it into a tire shop and you say, yep, yeah, I want all new tires, I want these, whatever. Just because you're taking your vehicle in and paying for the new tires, doesn't mean you're gonna get new tires. Those tires 
could have been sitting on the shelf for a year, year and a half. Never been on the road. They're gonna sell them to you as new tires, but they're not new tires. They're already a year and a half old, just sitting on the shelf. So whenever you buy new tires for any vehicle, always look and make sure that the dot date is a young dot date. Okay, they're only four, five, six months old. These tires here, I believe were about 15, 16 weeks old. I checked the dot date. He actually even uh, texted me. He says, Martin, I found your tires. I said, did you get the dot dates? What are the dot dates? He says, I'll text them to you. And he texted me the dot dates of every single tire. Because I told him when we were on the phone, I was not going to accept any tire that was over six months old, period. Not going to do it. So just keep that in mind when you're buying new tires. And the last thing about tires that I want to address is um, those who go online and buy tires and have them shipped to your, to your tire store. Uh, I wouldn't do that. I don't like doing that, and here's why. Let's just do it this way. I, I bought these tires, what'd I say? Uh, $2.79 a piece, okay, whatever it was. I can find them online for $2.49. $30 cheaper than a tire. Free shipping, okay? So they're going to send me six tires for $30 a piece cheaper and they're gonna send them to the tire shop. We get to the tire shop and they're doing the install and guess what? One of the tires is defective. One of the tires is out of round. One of the tires is something, something, something. Well, now what are you gonna do? Now you gotta take this tire and send it back. They're gonna send you another tire. I mean, it just brings such a level of stress that I just don't want in my life. I go through the tire store they, they know what kind of tires I want. They know the dot date I'm willing to accept. And if something goes haywire on install day, they're going to get the new tire. I don't have to do anything. They're going to go get me another tire. They're going to take care of this job. Um, so that's the way I handle it. If you still want to do online shopping, you can. I'm just giving you my reasons why I would not do that. Oh, man, and check this out. While I was getting the tires installed, I went and took a walk around their yard and I'm looking at all these things and I'm going, oh man, this is exactly why tires is my number one concern on this RV. I don't want anything like this to happen to our RV. I mean, it would like really be a painful, painful experience. So I just thought I'd share that with you. I want to thank all of you who have been using our Amazon store. I just can't tell you how blessed Joni and I feel that you support us by going to our Amazon store and buying the things that you need, whether it's RV related or not. It just doesn't matter. Just go to our store and you can shop on Amazon like you normally would and put it in the cart and check out. And many of you have been doing that. And I just want to thank you so much for that. And for those of you who might be new to our channel, the link to our Amazon store is down there in the description text. You go down there, click it, go to the store. Great experience. And a quick reminder to those newcomers that are to our channel. Don't forget to go to my main YouTube channel page. Click the playlist tab. It'll take you to a library with a ton of videos that it's going to show you how to take care of your RV yourself and save a boatload of money. It's that simple. Click, watch, learn. <laughs> save money. Well, that's it for now, guys. I hope this uh, video has been informative and it'll help you the next time you get ready to put new rubber on the bottom of your RV. So until next time, this is RV Street. Stick around. <laughs>